you can find your asset, import, export, settings, updates, and help menus on the left side of your screen. In the middle of the page, you can find your different workspaces with the different assets and information on how many flights have been done, the total size of the folder, and which drone was used. A workspace can have multiple assets in it with multiple inspections and flights. It is a new way to organize data and be able to share them easily. If you have multiple workspaces, you can select them directly on the drop-down menu. Then, you can click on Show Inspection and then open the inspection. The video will start playing automatically, but you can always pause it by using the space bar or clicking on the pause button. On the lower part of the screen, you can see the timeline of the flight. If you have multiple flights in the inspection, you can find the different timelines there. The green lines are the point of interest. To add new POI, simply click on the POI icon on the top of your screen. This will open the point of interest menu. On the top of your screen, you can find options like the digital zoom, the thermal camera, the RGB contrast and brightness control, the copy or same frame button, the undistortion button, the place mark, the line and the two dimension measurement. Then on the right side, if you click on the plus sign, you will add a view of the 3D map in your report. You can add multiple views and orientations to each point of interest. You can then delete them by clicking on the small trash icon next to it. Click on the pen icon to open the annotation menu. In this panel, you can change the name of the point of interest, add custom tags with colors, and add a criticality level and a description. Once finished, just click on Save and Close. The color of your POI will change with its level of criticality. On the right side panels of this list, you can find five icons. The first one is just information about your flight. The second one shows your folder hierarchy. In this menu, you can hide or show the trajectory, map, or snapshots of your flights. The next icons are the annotation settings. Then you have the report settings. You can select which information you want to import in your report and select your logo. Then you can simply click on Generate a PDF to create your report. In the Export tab, you can choose which file to export in a different organized folder. Inspector will just make a copy of the original workspace data, making you visualize it flight by flight in a similar way as Inspector 4. You can also export singular frames for a PIX 4D workflow in this tab. The last option is to export Faro Connect, BAG and JSON. Another important new setting is the possibility to manually align flights. This might prove useful if you do some flights without doing the relocalization at the start, or simply if you have a different takeoff place. The Inspection Overview tab allows you to illustrate better what is in the report. If you click on the plus, you will create a screenshot of the point cloud as an overview to better illustrate to the client where different groups of poise were taken in the asset. If you have opened a UT inspection, you have now different new options, including the possibility to visualize the value of the measurements directly on the point cloud. You can toggle on and off this option you have also the option to display the POI name instead of the POI thickness values in the point cloud. The measurements are also displayed besides every UT POI on the left side bar. If you click on the measurement itself or on the new UT chart tab, you can look at the A scan and the parameters of the probe at the moment of the picture. The best setup for reviewing a UT inspection is to open the UT window and then place the windows on both sides of the screens, like so, adjusting them to the right size. The system is always recording the A-scan at every moment of the flight to distinguish the moments when the probe is actually recording some thickness measurements in the timeline at the bottom you can see some orange and green lines, respectively indicating when the measurement is considered valid or stable by the system. 
Using those two arrows, you can go frame by frame and select the best scan possible at any given moment. If you took a POI mistakenly when you had a bad scan or when the system was not choosing the right peaks, find a good scan, delete the old POI and click on the Add POI button to save it. You can also edit the A scan and measurements on Inspector. You can view what peaks were selected by the algorithms, but if you click on Edit, you can drag the point of measurement to select another peak. The system is then going to recalculate the measurements. Based on the new peaks you choose from the scan dot, you can now place your name as a reviewer of the scan and select if it is a invalid or valid scan, or if the interpretation is unclear. This will be also displayed in the report. We can also edit the gain to have more clarity on the peaks and change the scan rectification. You can also associate a calibration to the measurement in post so that the measurement is recalculated with the new calibration. As the system records all the calibrations performed in the calibration tab, you can visualize them as a list. You can select one and see the scans that were taken during this two-point calibration. We can see different information on this, like for example, this thickness that we input. You can also edit this calibration and change, for example, the thickness of the block. This is useful if you made a mistake during the calibration process on the field. Inspector is going to recalculate the same velocity and all the values in the 3D model as well. You can also change the name of the calibration, naming it like the number of the calibration block that was used. For example, you can also decide to select a different peak, as we did with the measurements, as the algorithm might mistakenly select wrong peaks to calculate the thickness. Once you click on, the system will update all the measurements that were associated to this calibration. You can also create a new calibration with this button inputting the new sound velocity. You can also associate a calibration to the measurement in post so that the measurement is recalculated with the new calibration. Renaming it and changing the calibration serial number. This functionality is very useful if you take measurements in an asset and only a few days after you realize that one of the elements was of a different material. On the left side of your screen, you can select the Import menu. From this page, you can import data directly from an Elios 3, or you can import data from another workspace. Select the folder data to import from, and then select the asset to Import. And finally, you can import data from Inspector 4. You need to select the folders that contain FLY files, then you select or create a new asset and inspection and click on Import. You will then be able to open your data imported in Inspector 5. The next menu on the left side will be the Export menu. This is the best way to export workspaces to other drives. This will copy the full folder hierarchy and make sure next time you load the workspace, everything comes back the same way. There is nothing new on the Settings or Help menu.